fellas this is probably the most legendary podcast i've done so far but before ams right before y'all are praising ams there was a man light-skinned nigga muscles pretty eyes elliot host schooling you boys and now he's here today on the podcast to kick y'all some game let's bring your hands up for elliot host everybody thank you so much man for coming on the show you know what i'm saying kicking game to, to, to the young kings out there because it's funny like there was on youtube there's different generations of guys giving game you know if you go all the way back was it like rsd tyler and them right it was like they're like the puas right most people most of my people have never heard of them and then it goes at least in my opinion like ellie and, and whoever whoever you were on youtube with and then it went ams and now it's fresh and fit right so it's like there's all these different generations of guys and you're definitely a generation that kids who are 18 may not have ever heard of but i'll make sure you know we respect the ogs man because all the stuff that fresh and fit may say or ams would say came from you first you know so it's like it's cool to to you know to, to bring it all back but uh today's topic guys is uh we're gonna do three things men need to do right to like not even about women we're not talking about that yet just three things men just must do to become better men and then towards the end for you horny guys out there we're gonna definitely gonna spit some game as well three things guys can implement in our dating life but for me uh i'm gonna have our guests go first what's the one thing a man needs to do man to, to just just in life in general you got to build yourself up. You got to be, because they say that a woman's job is to retain her value. A That's man's good. job is to build his value, right? And that means a woman basically comes out with the value that people are seeking, that men are seeking mm. their beauty, their soft skin, their smell, and Absolutely. their peace leave. Shout out to uh, Coach, Coach uh, Greg Adams. Coach the Greg, peace yeah, leave, Coach he Greg, calls yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> The peace sleeve. They got the peace sleeves. So they come out with that value, but men, it don't work that way. Men become. And so before looking for anything, you got to build yourself up. And the number one primary priority for a man when he hits that age, when testosterone starts flowing, is you got to get in the gym. You got to get in the gym because that's what sets us apart. There's a myriad of things that set us apart, but by mere virtue of having testosterone flowing through your bones, flowing through your blood, makes you a man. And so you got to use it or you lose it. And we are living in a time of epidemic low testosterone. Yeah. And that can be that can be corrected in a myriad of different ways. But number one, very simply, is get in the gym. You're going to look better. You're going to feel better. You can have a better hormone profile. It'll be more attractive. You have more self-confidence. You'll be able to overcome resistance because that's what it True. is when you're in there. Absolutely. Got you. So one thing I'll touch on is creating value. You know, I just feel like, man, some men, they're kind of stuck where it's like, okay, their confidence is low. So they're not in the gym. Their confidence is low. So they're not, you know, really self-improving too much. And it's like, bro, I, when I coach my clients, and then this is a pretty bold statement, but you could probably agree. I coach a couple of guys who are versions, right? Here are 21, 22. And I'm like, dog, I know this sounds crazy, but you may never get to procreate if you don't bring value. You know what I mean? You may never have to have a family. So you have to like, man, like sh this, this unconfident man, you got, but you got to shed that, get into the gym. And like, cause most of these guys have a little bit, like their BMI is a bit off or that they're a bit overweight right so it's like you can't be short and overweight you can you, you just can't be both right you, you gotta you can't you can't be both bro so you gotta be able to right. at least if you're short you can't control that can't control that but at least be able to control your body and your income right a girl can go yeah my man's five six but he's in great shape and he makes good money to support us and the family right so you gotta just become the best man bro because elliot said if you don't if you don't bring the value you may a, a, a woman's uh, father may go, Hey, he's not fit for you, baby. You know, that's not right. good. <laughs> and women by default want a man that can protect them. I know this is kind of like maybe archaic thinking, but even for a man, we look for a woman that looks weaker, softer, submissive. Yeah. And the polarity is there. If we're bigger, stronger, aggressive, then it works. Facts. But what we got is kind of like a flip-flop today where a lot of men are soft, 
effeminate, weak, and the women are walking around like strong, independent, tough. Let's talk about that, bro. I feel like a lot of times this this will happen in my opinion. Feminism told when uh told I think men as well, hey, it's okay to cry. Oh, yeah. It's okay to be right. uh emotional. You don't have to protect. Right. Protect from who? Women can protect themselves, right? right? So yeah. men are like, so <laughs> for, for the for the men who are a bit more, I think my term, my opinion, more beta, like, okay, well, if that's what women are now, then I guess I'll just do that stuff. And what happens is, yes, women applause them. Yes, you don't have to pr- protect. Who said that? You, you don't have to. You can cry. Who said you couldn't? And men are accepting this new narrative. Well, guys like us, we're like, no, we're not doing that. We're sticking to the, to the same script that we've been here since the beginning of time. We may get shamed right. for that, but there's still women who will accept us, right? And to be honest, even the girls who are feminized deep down still want a protector. They want to yeah. go out to the club and get, right. their, they get, get their butt smacked. We're like, babe, well, hey, you're independent. I, like, they want us to step up, right? Still, even, even if they're a, a crazy feminist, they still want a man to step up and protect them in times like that. So guys, yeah. you're, you're going to have to be, you know, I was proper words. Like you're have to be willing to be okay with being shamed. Me and Elliot, he's been going through it longer. I've been going through it for a little less, but you have to be okay with being shamed for being a man. Because nowadays, the new man is the, the more feminized, the more I don't need to protect, I don't need to provide. They, they may be, um, I think Coach Greg Adam said this, you may be applauded in public, but the dudes who are like us are getting, you know, getting banged in, in private. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the social engineering in the world will never change biology. True. Never. Absolutely not, dude. Hundred percent. They can try their best, create all these new social constructs. Men need to be emotionally <laughs> available. What that means, also how, how, how I see that word is, you can understand her emotions. You're right, but right. You it's because this is what, this is what I tell girls. Yes, you may accept. You sorry, you may not leave your man for crying, but what are the chances of you sucking the skin off his? You know what that night? Slim, slim, <laughs> right? So it's right. like, yeah, you may, you may stay, you may not divorce them, but that night your sexual drive towards a crying man will be a lot less. And they can't argue that. Yeah. They may go, okay, all right. You got me there. Like, okay. Right. Right. She's so, not getting wet. Yeah. <laughs> Are you got right. tears coming down your face? No. <laughs> and fellas, we're not saying to hold it in. You need to find your masculine friends who can who can be there for you we're not me and elliot aren't here saying never show a mo dude or this right this is on the fresh and fit podcast and i think it's a great point of course let's say god forbid knock on wood someone dies of course you they don't expect your girls expect you to be stoic in the face while holding your dead son obviously you can show emotion right. but it's just like oh yeah yeah but like bro like but when you're um let's say someone pissed you off at, at your job babe this this guy bradley man he's just so annoying man i just want to punch him in his face like that's just call your boys like just just call talk to your boys <laughs> you know your girl doesn't need to be there for all these emotional times in your life you know i feel like mm-hmm. the best thing to do is hey babe you know i'm not feeling the best right now but i'm gonna get through this don't worry about it okay you were emotional you show you yeah. told her hey i'm this is what's going on but i'm i'm, I'm good I'm, I'm working towards but you, you have a wife right yeah so it's like, so how do you, so, you, so you're a great example. How do you do your emotion? I know you're never, you're not emotionless, but how do you show emotion if you do to your wife? Well, I'll preface this by saying okay. that my dog died, got hit by a car two weeks ago. And I was really? crying. Really? really? You know, yeah. Oh, shit. Man, oh, my shit. dog got hit by a car, died, I had to drag him in and bury him. So of course, yeah, the feelings... <laughs> I can't help it. Yeah. The tears are just coming. They're just there. Mm. I'm not trying to make them come or I'm not yeah. trying to hold them back. It's just, it's there. And my wife is there with me. And she, of course she was crying as well. Where I think we sort of get it a little twisted is when we complain, we whine and we cry to our woman thinking that maybe she could help us. I ah. think that's what a, a big, the big issue is. I'm not so sure that showing the emotion is the problem. I think showing showing up and asking her to do something about it. Like Ah. maybe she can console me. Maybe she can solve it for me. Maybe she can help, help rid me of this pain. 
but that's not her job, nor is she interested in doing that. True. So to show emotion is one thing, but then to expect her to reciprocate or to do something about it is a totally different ball game. We're the problem solvers. True. We're, and that changes the polarity because a woman will come to a man and she'll cry and because she wants him to console her. Facts. She wants, she wants comfort. But a man cries, it's okay. Hey, look, man, cry, but don't don't look for her to 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 be the, the problem solver. That's all I'm saying. I feel yeah, I feel like that's a that's a great point. Definitely a good clip. Because I feel like it's a big battle. Whenever anyone brings up men crying, women, of course, oh yeah, of course, cry. Oh yeah, cry, cry. Right. And then I feel like, okay, listen, we just we just can't confide in you to fix the issue. If you, so just yeah. don't confide them to fix the issue. So that's a good one. So my on the next topic, my thing, my, my one is obvious is find purpose, right? I feel like a lot of men, right, when you just go to work and come home, crack open a beer, Netflix, and then bars on the weekends, that life, you're probably not the happiest, right? Even if you say you are, you're, you're probably not the happiest, because deep down, you have a burning desire to do something different, but you just don't know what it is. And what that is, is purpose, right? For me, I was able, I'm blessed. I'm able to, I was able to monetize two hobbies. Number one, I'm a videographer and photographer. It went from being fun to me doing this full time. That's dope. Like it doesn't feel like work when I show up to a music video. It doesn't feel like work when I show up to a wedding and I shoot video. That's awesome. I love it. I enjoy it. But then I'm also, I started talking about, you know, dating and stuff like that for fun on TikTok. All of a sudden, here, my hand, here I am at almost half a million, right? So I was able to monetize things I'm good at. And I feel like if, if men, if, we, if you're able to monetize things you're good at, that's when you find purpose, man. Because I guarantee you don't want to sell health insurance eight hours a day. That's just, I don't think you were put on this earth to just do that. Maybe you can do that, but on the side, guys, flip sneakers. You can, there's too many things you can do on the side to make even a small income, a hundred bucks a month, dude. That's $1,200 richer in the year. You know what I mean? So just, I think men need to really find something that they love to do because that's going to make them, I think, a better man. I feel like you can definitely talk about purpose because, you know, look look what you're able to build from purpose, you know? I agree with you. And I would just, I would just continue that by saying one of the best pieces of advice my father ever gave me was, I don't care what you do as long as you're the best. And that's becoming a master. I think that's really important for men because you're saying monetize what you're good at, but you know what? Most guys ain't good at nothing. Who, what are you good at? <laughs> what is you could do? What can you do? True. Yeah, true. I and feel, it's yeah, really yeah, basic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You no know, school hasn't taught us to try to excel in anything except being the same. True. If, so most men are just the same. They're just flat, gray, on the fence, nothing extraordinary about them. Where is your field of mashy? Where's your area of mashy? Where's that one realm by which you step in and no one can touch you? Ah. No one can say, hey, that guy is, is weak, he's soft, or he's less than a master. Find that one area. You know, you mentioned selling insurance. I don't want to sell insurance. Maybe you don't want to sell insurance. But if the guy that's selling insurance is a G at selling insurance, he's selling more packages, bigger packages to more people around the world, and he's opening up offices, guess what? He's selling insurance like a master, and that's True. the kind of guy that you want to be. True. I met a guy who is a plumber, right? He's, he's a plumber. I guess that may be in some realms considered a lowly profession, right? You're cleaning up dirty water, whatever it is. He's yeah, got a skill, he, and so he's got mastery, but not only that, he went from being just a, a journeyman plumber to now he's got like eight offices throughout the state wow. because he was so good at it. And he was so reliable as a plumber and as a businessman that he was like, all right, let me bring other dudes under my belt. Let me open up an office here. The guy is crushing it. And what does he do? Fix pipes. True. He found what he was good at and became a master. So I think the biggest thing, yeah. guys, because I, 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 I think I feel like that's a great point. Most men do like that. I think of my friends, 
they're not really that good at really anything. Like there's no skill they have right. that's crazy. But if you can become a master, that's when your income will really change. That's when your employer can't replace you because you're a master, right? So I think, right. So, you know, I, as I feel like, you know, get to a level of mastery, which will take that 10,000 hours. And just, you know, if you get there, you'd be a G at what you do. Right. Um, and then um, another thing is too, and um, I feel like men, this is my number two, I'll get your number two in a second, is you made a video on this as well. And this is, this is an interesting topic, right? Victim mentality, right? So this goes for more so for how I say this properly. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, you're a white kid and your dad wasn't around or mom wasn't around. You feel like, you know, I, I, I might, the cards I was dealt wasn't good enough or you're, you know, you have, you know, melanin like me and Ellie and you feel like, oh, the world's against us. Okay, look, I'm not, the same, I'm not the type of guy to sit here and go, oh, you're not this, you're not oppressed. Like, because I don't know your situation. I don't, I don't know. But the thing is, what are you going to do about it? Right. Because I know for a fact there may be some people in this world who may have better opportunities than me because of the color of their skin. But that doesn't bother me because I know I'm better than they are anyway. Right. So it's like I don't let damn near anything come between me and my goal. I don't care about skin color. It could be could it could be a factor. Sure. But do I care? No. Right. I know you made a video on it. So like I know, you know, you came up as a mixed uh, biracial kid where it's like you i guess maybe maybe you weren't black enough for the black kids and weren't white enough for the white kids and it kind of sometimes i feel like who who's accepting me so i feel like you're a great person to speak on the whole victim thing yeah and i think you made a really good point in terms of you if you have self-mastery if you got some form of mastery then nobody could tell you anything my True. father is from belize right my father he's uh, they call them coolie, almost like how you got, your hair is a little soft. I don't yeah, know, you must yeah, be mixing yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's hair is a little soft, but he's dark skinned, just like he's same color skin as you. Oh, okay. And my dad, not only that, he's a black asshole. My dad got an <laughs> attitude. He got a mean attitude. He's an alpha. Yeah, he's he's the only black guy and he's an alpha and, he, and nobody fucks with him. And he's got a bad attitude. That's just my dad. Yeah. But wherever he goes, because he picks his cars, he does uh, auto body. Wherever he goes, he's the top guy. He's the top producer. He's the fastest one to get the job done. So even though everybody, quote unquote, could hate him, because he's developed mastery, because he's so good at what he does, he can get away with it. And that's the same thing with what you're saying. Like, okay, so maybe you're black, maybe you're brown, maybe you're purple, it don't matter. But if you're a mastery, people will, if you have mastery, people will respect you. If you're good at what you do, people are going to respect you regardless. The problem is when you're useless and then you have a strike against you because of color or whatever, oh God, yeah. now it's very easy to be looked over, passed over, ignored, or even denigrated but you have nothing to back it up. So it's like, who cares? Absolutely. You're useless. You could be black and useless. You could be white and useless. I agree. And one thing that just came to my mind, I'm not sure this even correlates, but for example, Jimi Hendrix, right? The fact that he was a black man during, you know, real racial times, right? Where there was colored water fountains and he'd play at a white show. Like that always never made sense to me. Wait, dad, like if, if white people were racist, why were Jimi Hendrix playing at Woodstock? Well, hey, when you're a bad mother effort, like you, it don't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Right. It just don't matter. That's like, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you're just that yep. freaking good and no one's no one's better than you. Well, hey, he's black, but he's the best one. So put him on stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like right. during the most racist times in America, Jimi Hendrix was able to play at the play the national anthem and and go to these all white areas you know he, when uh he go to these cities he may have to stay at the motel and not the caesar's palace but he at least <laughs> at least he was at, at the place because he was just that good you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i feel like guys like here's the thing me and elliot we're already got our careers going we can't come and save you we we, we can't we, we can't come back and save you you're, you're in this by yourself right so you got to find a way to just make it happen because no one's going to come and help you bro no one's going to come and help you. Nobody. Your mom ain't going. She, she may come help you clean your clothes, clean your place. But when it comes to you in your career, no one's going to help save you, man. You really got to go out and get it. Because you think about it. a woman 
cannot have that dog in her, that grit, get go look pretty, sit at a nice steakhouse by herself and get saved that night. She could. A rich man can walk all up to her. Hey, pretty lady, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to get sponsored? $10,000 a month in allowance. And all you got to do is just sleep with me twice a week. Sure. You don't have that luxury. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to come nah. save you. Bro, <laughs> if you go, if you go to that nope. steakhouse, all fly by yourself. Yeah, I got to give you a compliment. Hey, bro, look, looking pretty fly, but no one's going to give you a $10,000 a month allowance for being handsome. You don't, you don't have that yeah, privilege. You got to go get it. You, you got to go nope. get it, right? And there's some women out there who are like, I call it like, you know, when you play video games, guys, and you have to unlock a certain character. Think of that with some women. Some women won't even look your way until you make a certain amount of money. As sad as it sounds, you have to like, bro, you can be the most handsomest guy. If, you, if you're not pulling up in that wraith, you're not pulling up in that, that new bins, she's not even looking your way. Now, you may go, well, I don't want those girls anyway. Fair. I, I get it. I get it. But, like, I know you guys follow these Instagram models. Go, damn, she's so bad. She's so this. But sorry, bro. She won't even look your way until you got status, until you make a name for yourself. You got that blue check mark like right. Ellie. Like, they won't even look your way until. <laughs> so it's like you have to create so much value that women are at your feet. Cause now I'm not saying create mm -hmm. value. So you have women you can. So what basically it's like this guys, when you create value, all of a sudden you have the leverage because there's a, there's millions of beautiful women, but very few high value men with purpose, you know, alpha mentality, very few of you guys. Yeah. Right. So there's a hundred of y'all and a million of them. Now you have the leverage right now you can right. pick and choose. Now you can say, nah, girl, like, you're living a thought lifestyle. I don't want you. But when you're low, when you when you don't have purpose, you don't have a grind. You're not making that much money. You're not the bomb with the rest of the dudes. And now you're 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 fighting for like now it's reversed. Now you're fighting for like the the hundred or two hundred girls that you can get. Let's flip it. Create value. Grind. Get to the top. Now you have the leverage in choosing a partner. Now um. How I say this, when you started growing on YouTube and, you know, getting the, you know, the social media cloud, did your options with women change or you weren't, you didn't really care about that? Oh, man. It was amazing. <laughs> oh. You know, I married my, <laughs> it's the craziest thing because I wish I knew when I was younger, right? There was no, you guys, like you weren't out there. There was no, no TikTok and no. You, there was no RSD. When I was in high school, it was like, you know, I just. I knew what the Disney movies and the hip hop uh, yeah. music was telling me. Whatever I was listening to in R and B, right, like Cisco yeah. uh, and shit like that. Whatever these guys were saying, that's what I knew. I knew what the culture was telling me, and it was all wrong. It, yeah. it, it turns out going to her house but, with a boombox, like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was it was so wrong. So I didn't I didn't realize that a man doesn't really reach his sexual market value until after thirty anyway. Yeah. And I remember being in my 20s and I had a girlfriend who's now my wife. I started dating my wife when we were in high school. Oh, nice. And it, for me, you know, I don't want to maybe I don't want to say I had a uh, lack mentality, but I stayed with her because girls weren't paying attention to me. Wow. You know, I, I, I liked her. I enjoyed her. Uh, she, she was a great girl. That's why I married her. But it wasn't like I had a whole lot of options. <laughs> it Even was not a whole lot of options. Light skin, for light skin, green eyes, muscles wasn't enough. I was a beta, man. Uh, I didn't know. Okay. I, didn't, okay. I didn't know anything. <laughs> I was a blue pill beta. You know, 20-year-old Elliot was, he was not it. You know, yeah, I was, I, yeah, I just didn't know. So, and then also I ended up just not being in the second sexual marketplace because I was like, all right, well, I got my girlfriend. I'm good. And I just, True, and, yeah. and she and I get along so well. She's, she's such a great woman because she adds value to my life, not just, pussy and friendship she made from right the right from the beginning she's cooking for me cleaning for me she's like my she she support me she's my greatest cheerleader gotcha. but anyway that's not neither here nor there um by the time i got became 30 32 33 and i'm on youtube i'm getting famous all of a sudden i realized wow there's a whole wide world of women adored it just just opened up for me and yeah. it was kind of shocking because i was like where the hell were these chicks 10 yeah. years ago where, are where, were you, where were you guys now all of a sudden and i'm not even looking for you i'm not interested in you but now you come knocking at my door Fact. and so that kind of like that that woke me up a little bit and started I, that's when i started like paying attention to intersexual dynamics and i started getting yeah. red pilled and i was like 
Ah, I see what happened there. Hypergamy. Now I know. So I, I always warn the young men. I tell them now, I say, listen, fellas, I know you're in your 20s and, you, and you're and you trying your best. You want women to pay attention to you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because as soon as they hit that wall, they're on their way down, which is usually around their age, 20, 28, 29, 30. That's when you're on your way up. So it's just a little bit of reversal of roles. True. The young thoughts right now that they aren't paying you attention, they're going to wish they were paying attention to you 10 years from now. But guess what's oh. going to happen when you're 10 years from now? Now you're going to date the 20-year-old. Yeah, true. They'll sh- they will shame you for that, though. But it's just don't worry about it, King. Do your thing. You want yeah, who you. cares? Yeah, they'll shame you. So let's talk about that, man. I made videos about this a couple of <laughs> times. You probably see this all the time. These young 19, 20-year-old girls on TikTok, the nice guy who gives me the world, who's probably my soulmate. She's like, meh, the guy who hasn't texted me back in a week. She starts to smile, right? That mentality, guys, will last until until they're about 26, 27. Once they hit that, like like that wall, like, wait a minute, I've passed up all these good men for these really, you know, athletes, these rappers, these entertainers, and I'm still (laughs) single. Okay, now you go back to that guy in high school who I who I made who I made life hell for, right? And he's like, baby, I'm good. Like now, now I'm I'm making money. Now I'm handsome. Now I got to pick a litter. You you had your shot. (laughs) <laughs> so it's like this mindset of like the young woman guys, trust me, the girl who you gave the world to will come back around at 27 looking for you. Cause she's like, damn, I yeah. was stupid. I was dumb. I chased the, the athlete. I chased the, the, the top dogs when I was, when I was young because of my beauty. But now I realize I need security. I'm getting older. And now the guys she friend zone and, and called bro are now moved on. So here's the thing though, yeah. you hit your peak only when you self-improve if you're yes. still broke still beta still no confidence 30s is not the number where all of a sudden bloop 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 you just turn into like this 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 new guy you <laughs> that's self, right self-improvement is still needed so don't think 30 is like okay i'll wait till i'm 30 that's no things will make sense if you're not putting the work in it won't matter you know what i mean yeah Right. You can't still be living with your mama. Yeah. You still can't be taking the bus yeah. and you can't be True. 40 pounds overweight and you can't, you know, you got to take care of yourself and yeah, all that. If you take care of yourself, grinding, making money, building value, looking good. By the time you turn 30, I was at my peak, man. Truthfully, I was the best looking I ever was. And I was, I had more money than I ever was, but that's why the value was there. And it was just like, it skyrocketed at that point. So gotcha. you're right, man. You got to you got to put in the work when you're in your 20s. Can't Absolutely. whine, complain and play video games. Absolutely. And uh, do you have like a second point uh, to where, you know, to help men become the best version of themselves? I think I, I almost got to my third point. But you even said your second point. You have a second point to add to help men out, you know, become the best version of themselves, like a point they can work on. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought about this before we got on the show because uh, yeah. you mentioned it, but sure. self mastery, mastery, field mastery field mastery you got to be great at something yeah right it doesn't matter what it is you know uh if you're a computer geek you got to be the best fucking computer geek there is out there you could just run circles around people right if you're if you're a street sweeper you by the time you get to your prime you need to have six sweep sweeping trucks and a fleet and you know what i'm saying like be the best again it doesn't matter exactly what you do but if you are top of your game and you're number one and you're the best and you achieve mastery in that area, no one can touch you. No. And that's not even in terms of w- with regard to women, right? Because women who want high status men, high status men create value. Facts. And but I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just for yourself as a man. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So for me, guys, since I'm in this, you know, dating men's, men's self-improvement field, I'm reading books. I'm re I'm YouTube. I, I'm trying to become the best version of myself because when someone comes to me with a question, I got to be able to answer it. Now, sometimes I'll be straight up. Hey, I've never been through that. I can't give you what I would do because I've never been there. That's why I feel like I'll be the best at 30. Five more years of this, bro. Oh, like, cause I feel like Kevin Samuels and, and AMS are so good. Cause dude, they, they started when they're like in their thirties and forties when they have already experienced so much life. You know what I mean? Like, so I feel like yeah. once I get older, my advice would be much better because I probably would go through oh, yeah. it. But self mastery is huge, man. Like, I just feel like a lot of men are just so content. Or just hey, it's just I feel like 
some men don't go to self mastery because it's comfort. My, I have a job that pays bills that I'm, I'm able to go on vacation once a year. I, I'm able to go out, have fun. I can have a steak here and there. Like I'm, I'm, what's the point of putting extra work? I'm good. Right. So some men don't have that, that drive just to be the best version. And it's, it's unfortunate, but do you have any advice for a guy that basically said that like, Hey, I'm just good, Elliot. Like, I'm just, I don't feel the need to, I'm just, I'm comfortable. Or, or, or is that like, or do you let, if someone says they're comfortable to you, Elliot, are you like, okay, cool. As long as you're happy or do you go, nah, bro. Like if someone to come to you saying that, you know, that they're comfortable, what, what, what would you tell them? If there's no problem, there's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You know, I'm not trying to save everybody. I'm not an sure. evangelist out here trying to try to save everybody's life. If sure. you good with that, if you're comfortable with that and your life is the way you want it to be, and you're cool. not complaining. The problem is the guys that complain. Ah, now, if you, okay. if that's the way you're living. And now you got complaints about it. It's not fair. And you're trying to play the victim role. Like yeah. you're talking about before. Now we got to talk, buddy. <laughs> but if you're okay with it, listen, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cultures. There's a lot of people there. You know, this is what the monks, the Zen monks and the Christian monks up on Mount Athos yeah. and this is how they this is how they chose to live their lives, not to be always striving, not always needing, not always reaching and grabbing and trying yep. and, and you know what I'm saying, climbing mountains. They've discovered that peace in life comes from acceptance. Hey, accept your situation, accept your circumstances, be okay with your lowly role. And in fact, there's a there's there's room for enlightenment there it, because it's detachment. When you have that kind of detachment, you're you're free from carnal constraints and you can allow your soul to soar. So there's something great about it, but you have to choose that and you have to dedicate yourself to that. And you got to choose like one of the things I often say, just in my opinion, that there's two righteous paths for the man. There's the way of the monk and there's the way of the married man, monk or marriage. Is you either you're working on your soul's ascension and you've detached from the world and you're not chasing pussy, you're not chasing money, you're not needing and needing and, and, and reaching for shit. You're evolving your soul. That's a beautiful thing. Dedicating your, your, your life to the Lord. That's a beautiful thing. Thanks. But on the other end of the spectrum, if you're going to choose to live in the world, you're going to be a part of the world. You got to dedicate yourself to something greater than you, bigger than you, and you got to fight. You got to struggle. You got to pull up your sword, pick out your your uh, your shield. You got to defend, and you got to fight. There's one or the other, and I think both are righteous paths. Absolutely. The middle road to me is the bat is is the shit path, the effeminate path, where you're living life for pleasure. Oh, as long as I have, uh, you know, my my pornography, and I can eat McDonald's, and I can just play video games all day. And, you know, the, the chick from down the block, you know, she might be 400 pounds, but she comes over and sucks my dick. Like just that nasty, just soft, effeminate way of living. I'm like, no, that's nah. it's one or the other in between. Mm -mm. Facts. Um, man, that's true, man. It's like this. If you're content, cool, but don't complain. That's, that's the biggest thing. So if, you're, <laughs> if you're comfortable, cool, bro. Do your thing. You know, if making 40 K cracking open a beer, watching Steph, Steph uh, Curry play basketball is, is comfortable. Congrats. That's awesome. But don't, don't complain though. Cause when you start complaining, yeah. that's when now we, we, me and Ellie got whoop your ass. Cause you're, cause you're complaining now <laughs> and that's not cool. Yeah. So my last point on, you know, as far as, you know, men's self-improvement, they'll get into the stuff for the horny boys is get dangerous, man. I'll say this. I've never to this day, to this day, been in a fist fight. Okay. Most of the time when, when I've gotten close to most of the time was me trying to fight and the guy feeling my energy and he backed down. There's only one, one time in my life where a guy pressed me and I want to fight him because he's been to jail. So guess what? He's willing to go there again and I'm not going with him. So I declined his fight. But now I've been boxing, Elliot. I've been boxing and I've been picking up real nice. quick. When I spar, I'm beating ass. Like I'm really, I'm, I'm bringing it because my, my trainer uh, says, bro, you're a good athlete. You're picking this up really quickly. And so now if a fight were to happen, I'm like, okay, I feel comfortable here. Before I was scared because I was like, what do I do? What if I get knocked out? What if, what if, what if? But now I've been in, put in the fighting scenario so many times. Now I'm, 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 
I'm okay with the violence before I was scared of the violence. And let's just say I'm out with my right. girl and someone to crack off and I got scared. I'm not getting my, 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 you know, what sucked that night. Right. Cause I, I showed fear. I showed weakness when the time was needed. Right. But now that, now that I'm okay with violence, I'm comfortable with violence. It's I'm more confident that if it were to happen, I'm ready for it. Did you, did you have you ever done any yeah. type of like a MMA or boxing or jujitsu at all in your life at all, Elliot? Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Got you. Yeah. So all that punching and kicking and kicking, shit. Yeah. Uh, I love it. So it's like, I, I get No, no. When did you, when did you get into that? uh 2019 i think it was 18 and 19 i did it like on and off for two years got you now since you know since you've been doing combat i guarantee you if if you know a, a situation came your way you probably wouldn't necessarily run away from it you know what i mean no i carry a pistol too Oh yeah, floor is different, bro. Hey, 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 we ain't fighting. <laughs> we, we ain't, we ain't oh, gonna fight. Blast the motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> we ain't gotta fight, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm this, this costs a thousand bucks. For, I'm gonna fight for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Where do you live? I'm in uh, Southern California, bro. We're uh, like, like by Laguna Beach. Uh, so it's a bit more, you know, liberal out here as far as the gun laws. You can have a gun, but you have to fight tooth and nail to, to, yeah. to get a to get a uh, an open carry like <laughs> an open carry license. You have to really go through a bunch yeah. of checks to get that. But um. Oh yeah. I just feel like uh, also for guys who aren't confident, you learning how to punch someone's face in, you learning how to throw a good roundhouse kick, that's going to give you yeah. some confidence, man. Like you going yeah. into sparring and beating somebody up, you leave that ring feeling like the shit, man. And some of these guys, they just like, they have all this anger in them from like not getting girls, not having the money they want. And you transferring some of that anger into a physical sport and winning. And, and getting medals and, you know, getting praise from your, your, your teammates and from, you know, yep. people at the gym, you're going to start to feel more confident. So the guys out there who just aren't that confident, you getting into, into a jujitsu gym, boxing, Muay Thai, and you getting good at that, th there comes into self mastery, you getting good at something that can protect you and your family that can give you, that's gonna give you confidence, bro, for sure. That's right. Yep. 100%. So I think we can now uh, segue into the, uh, you know, kicking some game, man. I feel like uh, if you put up a self-improvement video, you may get 50,000 likes, no, 50,000 views, but put on, you know, how to game your woman. Now you're at 100,000. So now we got to get into uh, what, the, what the, the men who, uh, you know, who want to know the game. So for me, number one, I think we can both attest to this, is uh, abundance mindset. Right. Now, I... It's, this is tough for guys, though, because, for example, I coach a guy five foot six, a little chubby in the face, makes twelve thousand dollars a year and is a virgin. How the hell can I tell him I'm an abundance mindset? He, he barely gets anything. Right. 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 So what I tell him is this. One thing I've got him better at, though, to kind of give him an abundance mindset is the second a woman showing you disinterest, go. Don't negotiate it. Don't think you can raise it. If she's showing you disinterest, you're out the door. Because what happens is yeah. he'll try to stay because he's in, he's in scarcity to try to raise it. Hey, if I just go into a five, six month plan of texting her every week, eventually I'll get, I'll get that date. You know what, bro? You may get that date, but <laughs> she's going to get there. Take, take the food you got, you get, you're given, and she's going to leave the second you go for your move. Okay, got to go. I'm on my period. Yeah. Like she's not going to yeah. um, th enthusiastically give you anything because you, you, you wrestled her on this date. Right. So right. what's your take on the, you know, the abundance mindset for the young Kings out there? Hmm. I mean, you can't go wrong with realizing that you're the prize, right? Yep. And realizing that let me be the one they come to, right? There's a lot of fish in that sea. So if one turn away, there's going to be another that comes this way. Absolutely. And I feel like for the abundance, man, it's you just, for me, at least I get, so for me, I have looks on my side. Now, mind you, I always look this way. It took years of looking at different models and different guys and what's best for me. Is it high beard, low beard? Is it lots? Like I, I took a lot of time for me to find out my look, but anyway, for the abundance mindset, for me, it's beautiful because it's like, if you don't want me, that's okay. I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get another one. What happens is sure. this is what I used to do. 
meet a girl. I said, I met a girl in January and she was, okay, I don't want to segue off yet. Keep it on the abundance. So I met a girl in January, okay? I would probably wouldn't go on a date with her till maybe mid-March. Why? Because even though she was showing me like medium to low interest, I wanted to raise it. It was almost fun for me. Take a girl from medium to low interest and bring it up to high. But here's the issue. Like we talked about before, when we got to the date, nothing happened. So it's like, you're almost wasting your time, guys, trying to raise a woman's interest when she's not high interest. To me, if it's not high interest, I, I almost don't even want it because I feel like I don't want to negotiate desire. I want to negotiate when are you free? It's just for me, if it's not coming to me in a way easy, I don't want it. And, if I don't, and, and from there, if she's not showing me the interest I want, abundance mindset, move on to the next one. Men get so stuck on one. And most of the time I get these emails, you probably, you know, back when you used to do this too, you probably get these long emails of guys, a situation going on for three, four months and, and haven't seen her yet. Or haven't, haven't been on a date with her yet. And it's like, bro, if you can't get the date within at least a couple of weeks, you probably move on to the next one. You know what I mean? So abundance is huge, man. You, you just got to move on. But what's something uh, you would say that helped you a lot um, that you, because you, you had a girlfriend most of, most of your life. So what is one thing you told your guys on YouTube for as far as the, the girl game that, that made you famous or, you know, you were really strong on? One of the things I'm strong on right now, because I see the damning effects of it, mm -hmm. is pornography. I um, that, yeah. When I was younger, I didn't have the access to porn. The first porn I ever saw was a VHS yeah, tape VHS. that my friend found yeah. in his dad's basement. We had to go and sneak and put it in the VHS. But it's totally different now because you're walking around with porn in your pocket when you look at your damn phone. Sure. And porn destroys your brain, it destroys your physiology, your ability to have sex. It does so much damn damage to young men that it's like worse than crack in many, in many regards. It, and it does, you, when you start becoming addicted to digital uh, uh, orgasms, it is like heroin, the, 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 the way the brain responds with the neural uh, transmitters is like a hit of heroin. Every time you get addicted to, to, to screen sex, and then you're walking around like a limp dick, right? Women can sense whether you're full. A woman could, woman could, women want to be filled up, first of all. That's really what they want from a man, a man that will just fill her up. But she also has this innate sense as to whether a man is limp or full himself. A limp man walks around limp, has a limp attitude because he's busting his nut, draining his seed every day watching these fucking porns. If a man is retaining, a man is maintaining, a man is growing his vitality, a woman can sense that too. She knows it. She's like, this man is full and he's ready to fill me up. In a way, women can smell your seed. And if your seed is spilled out on, on, on socks and sandals in your, in your be bedroom and bathroom, she can, sense you, she can sense that you're soft. So you got to put it away. It screws with your brain and it reduces attraction. Got you guys. So one thing I'll say is a lot of dudes follow girls. Like, for example, like the super popping Instagram girl, with 1.2 million followers. You need to get rid of her because here's what happens. You see a fine, you know what, picture, fine house picture of her, right? All of a sudden you start getting a little horny. All of a sudden, damn, now I got to take care of it. Pull out the hub, Right. So you may need to start on following people that even trigger, you know, trigger, trigger you to go there. Right? right. So for me, man, if a girl doesn't even follow me back, she's not getting followed. I am, I'm not following like Kim Kardashian, I'm not following Courtney. N none of these Instagram girls, right? All the girls I follow are girls I know and I've met in person, right? And they don't post two scandals. Some do, but like, I'm going to have to follow that hurt her too. But it's also getting rid of triggers, right? So if you follow people, who are very, you know, out there with their, with their sexuality, you have to get rid of them, man. Because what happens is if you're so used to uh, getting aroused by this, the, you know, what's on the, the screen when you're with a woman, it, it's not going to be the same because your body's only used to being aroused from seeing it, not actually, you know, right. doing it, you know, and yes. that troubles a lot of men. It's, it's usually something that men don't want to talk about. Because no one wants to talk about no. they're, they're really not working.
you know, that's right. not, you know, it's right. not something men are excited to talk about amongst their peers. Right. So I feel like, you know, getting rid of that will be a definite huge step in the right direction. Now, I'm curious too. Sometimes when I, if I ever do beat my meat, I try to just use my flashbacks, right? I try not, not to pull this out and just like, just put myself back where I was a couple of weeks ago, right? And that gets me, you know, enough. Because sometimes, bro, as you probably know, it's at one or two in the morning, you're, you're, st- you're standing up like this. I'm like, God damn, like, I can't go to sleep with all these sexual thoughts running through my brain. So sometimes I'll take care of it, but I don't. I do my best not to take this out. Because I, I can say this is the easy way out. Your phone is the easy way out. At least try to use your, 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 your brain to, you know, you, you know, get off instead of going on your phone. You know, both, both aren't the best, but if you're going to go with the phone, the phone way is the worst in my opinion. Yeah. Pulling out the hub is probably, yeah. probably the worst. Uh, so my next point, cause we're almost done here is man, take it or leave it mindset as well. So th- this is what I mean by take it or leave it. Let's just say you're like a woman and she sees you as her homeboy, take it or leave it. Either you go on my program as we're romantic or we're not, or, or nothing. Cause a lot of guys, what happens is though like a woman, and they get they get friend zone because again their, their game wasn't that good and the girl offers them hey this is my new proposal you get no sex but i got all i get all your attention though and some men sign the deal because it's what she wants if you've been taking mm-hmm. the mindset hey we're on my program either this is what we're doing or not at all you have any, anything to add to like a man's you know having to take it or leave it type of mentality yeah, and I would even you know that that dovetails perfectly into what my next oh. one would be, which is intolerance. Uh, yeah. Men need to be less tolerant. We need to be far more intolerant. Facts. And there are a few <laughs> things that you know, and we all have different standards. True. Certain things I would be intolerant of is I'm not going to date fat women. Sorry. If you are so <laughs> if you are overweight, right? And you don't take care of yourself, and you're in bad shape. I don't care how sexy you dress or how feminine you try to be. You're nasty. <laughs> you're nasty because you're lazy. And my mother always tell me a lazy woman is a nasty woman. And if you're right. fat, you're usually lazy, you're right? Usually also single mothers. I <sighs> don't date women that got babies. Don't try to save them. Don't try to save their seed. They made bad decisions. Let them go back to their baby daddy. I Another one that I was talking with my wife about. Yeah, 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 I yeah. No, up. don't do it. It's a bad <laughs> idea. That comes from lack mentality. Yeah. Also, one day, if you're going to be dating a woman and, you know, my first question is, why are you dating, right? Like, and if you're dating for intention of being serious, long-term marriage, uh, I don't want you to have an Instagram page where you're advertising yourself. Right? I always hate this conversation. Why would I want to <laughs> buy something, right? I'll go buy this car, and I bring this car home, but the guy is still advertising the car like it's for sale. I bought the car, it's my car. How are you be, still advertising this? It's the same thing. It's like, hey, look, if I'm, if we're gonna be together, you stop advertising. A lot of these women, they will not hear Never. it. They were like, no, no, I wanna be free. I'm doing it for me. It's like, no, you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for your attention. And if you're looking, seeking male attention outside of our relationship, then we don't need to be, get it, be together. So I'm intolerant. Is- Facts. Okay. I got a lot to say this one. Here we go. So I feel like men, since men, again, it goes back to scarcity. I finally found a woman who's nice enough to me, gives me this, the SEX shit, man. Like, I guess I'll take, I'll take what I got. Right. I'll post the same, listen, here are my boundaries. And if you can't ab- oblige to those, we can't be together. Cause a lot of girls have never been told that before. They've because they, a lot of girls, especially if they're above, they're like an eight, nine, like really pretty guys, just take them as they are because they, they got the eight right. or the nine, right? But for me, it's like, yo, this is again, be intolerant, have a take it or leave a mindset. Hey, listen, if you're going to be with me, if we're just casually dating, p- post your booty hole pics, uh, do, do your thing. But if, if you're, you're my, <laughs> my girlfriend, my wife, and I'm claiming you, like I'm walking around, this is my girl, there's got to be some things you have to be willing to change. I think a girl's perfect lifestyle is single on the gram, right? On the boats, at w- posing with the nice cars, posing with the nice house in the Ma- Beverly Hills, right? Looking single while going home to a man. That's their perfect life. 
advertising <laughs> while being in a relationship. They get best of both worlds. Get the attention yeah. from the, the ballers and the athletes and the entertainers, right? DMs, comments, yeah. and they get to go home to a man, right? That's their perfect life. And uh, here's the thing. Yeah. That's not going to fly me, baby. Uh, it's one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You got to delete that page. Sorry. Yeah. Or keep the page, but be gone. Yeah. Or it's like this, right? For me, for me, since I grew up with social media, I'm a, I'm a bit more different to it. Two you know? things I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to tell her. Listen, you may not have to get rid of it, but what you're going to have to do is go private, right? Because that makes no sense. I do it for me. Then why is it public? Why is it, why, why, why can everyone see it? Like, That's right. And they start back, uh, 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 like, okay, if it's for you, okay, friends and family, um, you don't add any athletes, you don't add any entertainers, guys who your hypergamous nature is fiending for, you know, accept them. And you just post, right? Because here's the thing, women, you can be sexy without showing a bunch of skin. You, you, there's ways, oh, yeah. to still, there's still ways still to show off your curves and be sexy without showing everything. And yep. I just feel like this. It's just, I've, I always on, when I bring on hot uh, women on the podcast, this is the, always the hottest topic because they always want to do both, right? And they say this, oh, I don't want to post my man on my page because I'll lose followers. I say then, listen, you're telling me you're willing to give up a man that's going to give you children and make you a mother, the biggest honor you can be for some followers. And they're like, well, uh, it's like, so Instagram has been like, it's almost like they're choosing. It's almost like Instagram's like their purpose. It's like, it's like their number one. Right. It is. And you, and you yeah. asking it to get rid of it is like, what? How, how dare yeah. you? Right. Yes. Cause that's where they get the validation from. That's what they get, like, yep. like the fuel in the car. Like, that's their fuel. It's like, you take away their Instagram page. These, man, taking away Instagram would take away these girls' whole identity, their whole, yep. who they are, right? Because that's where they get the, their, their, all the validation, the feel good, the feel good hormone comes from Instagram. They're feeling down, post a selfie from six months ago when they're 20 pounds lighter. The DMs flood. Ah, they feel good again. Right. But I don't think they realize that if they set that down and dedicate their lives to a husband and to a family. Oh, way different. And then they have children and they have grandchildren. They get the same attention. Look, my right. wife has a Facebook page and an Instagram. But you know what's on there? Pictures of her and her children. We're doing homeschool. And here's a yeah. picture of my kids. Oh, we took the kids to the to the game farm and my kids are playing with the horse. Yeah. And, you know, oh, here's Grammy and grandpa playing with the kids. She gets a lot of attention. She all her friends and family members. Oh, that's cute. Think. That's amazing. Oh, God bless you guys. You have a great life. And she get because she's a woman. She wants that kind of attention. She gets all the attention she wants, but it's the right kind of attention for the value that she's actually creating in the world rather Facts. than just showing her ass. Facts, dude. And it's sad because feminism told women that being a mother is like, oh, you, you, you need to be a CEO. You need to be a boss, babe. So <laughs> stay at home, mom. Pff, what? We're, 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 we're better than that. It's like, listen, you can't be biology, baby. You, like a lot of women, right. and, again, it, 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 this goes back to like the, the wage gap. It's like, y'all, we make more because we just work harder than y'all. We put in more hours than y'all. You guys have paternity leave. You guys choose jobs that aren't as good because you don't want to, for example, Women will pick it for more CEOs, but why aren't you picking it for more construction workers? Last time I checked, I saw all men. Right. But wh wh right. where are y'all out there? It's all men out there. See, right. there's not all men. Like, hey, go pick it over there. Nah, they ain't mm -hmm. trying to pick it. <laughs> like, they, they pick and choose. For example, women get paid more than men in modeling. Do you see men picketing? Oh, wait, wait, where are you guys picketing? Where are you guys picketing right. for, for equal pay for men in, 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 in modeling? I don't see that. So it's just like right. feminism has a, it picks and chooses where the inequalities are. There's inequalities all right. around. That's why it's fake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's an equality. Another, another thing. So before it was more men in college than women. Now it's more women than men. I don't see the feminist movement going, hey, we're all the extra, we need more men. Uh, there's, there's an inequality no. of men in colleges. We need, I don't see them picketing. Like, yeah. so- it's just they, it's the picking and choosing of the inequalities. Like, no, like if you're going to be about inequality, fight all inequality for men and women. Right. But it's, right. They, they pick and choose. No, it's all figments. 
Yeah, it's all fake. I saw a meme today. You know what's going on in Afghanistan, right? Yeah, like, you know, yeah. the U.S. troops, they're pulling out. And, you know, one of the big complaints that us postmodern, uh, post-enlightenment, big brain people have here in the West is women's liberation and women's right. And they want to fly the rainbow flag over there in this Muslim country. And so now they're having this, now they're having this problem. And I saw a funny meme that was like, uh, where are all the feminists going over to fight the Taliban for women's rights? There will not be a single female feminist over in Afghanistan fighting for female rights. The it's going to be men the, that's the doing their meme. bidding. They'll post a meme, though. Yeah. Like, like, the, the, like the, the, the activism is always through social, right? It's never boots on ground. You know what I mean? It's always just <laughs> yeah. posting a meme, right. posting their essay they wrote from the comfort of their home, but never boots on ground. It's like, Listen, baby, no, they don't do anything. If you if you want to make some change, you know, go out there with the feet on the ground and go into a, you know, like a city of commerce, city of chambers and talk to somebody. Don't just be social activism. And that, that's that's weak for me. Me and you are boots on the ground, you know, giving podcasts, talking, right. putting our thoughts in the world. Right. You know, this is doing like I'm this podcast may get this week maybe like a thousand views, you know, that's a thousand lives possibly changed. And that's not, and that's a good, that's a good thing, but we're not, you know, typing down novels and posting them on our Instagram page. Like is we're, we're doing something. So um, I, I actually <laughs> want to uh, touch on the last thing is uh, I read this in a book called millionaire fast lane. That's called change your oil. What that means is, so if you have a car, every three, maybe three to 4,000 miles depending on your car, you need, you need new oil, right? A lot of men probably haven't picked up a book, learned a new skill since high school, right? And it's just like, to me as a man, I want to be desirable for life, right? And so I'm always trying to learn a new skill, pick up a new thing, learn something new so I can be better to help my people, right? So I, I guarantee you from, you know, 20, when you, you know, when you're, you know, when you were, you know, on, wait, when did you start YouTube? What, what age roughly were you starting YouTube? 27. 27. So 27 to so 27 to maybe 35, right? I, I guess like, was like guess the hot streak, right? Or whatever, I'm not sure. But I guarantee you, you were better now than you were at 25, right? Because of self-improvement, because of lots of, learning new things you know reading you know getting, oh, yeah. getting new skills like just a lot of men just just like haven't picked up a book or learned a new skill since high school and i feel like men need to yeah. always be trying to evolve on something learn a new skill because the world is evolving and i feel like learning new skills and learning new things are definitely going to help you out with uh with, with, with being being a better man mm -hmm. yeah i agree and i don't know I can't help myself. I must be like a kid in the candy store. There's so many exciting things about life to learn. Every, wow. every day I'm like, wow, I wish I knew more about that. Like right now, no lie. I, I want to learn more about the Taliban. Like I'm watching these news stories and shit and like, you know, what's going on over there. And I almost like empathize with them a little bit. I'm like, these dudes have been fighting empires for the past 60 years. True, At so first it was the that. Russians and now it's us. And I'm watching them walk around with their guns. And I'm like, this is, I, I know I'll catch fleck for this because you're not supposed to say this here in sure. the West, but I'm watching them. I'm like, I want to know what, the, I really want to understand these guys. And so, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend the next couple hours trying to watch more videos, read some books. Like where, how did the Taliban begin? Cause I remember in the 1980s, we used to call them freedom fighters. How did yeah. they go from freedom fighters to terrorists? There's sure. some kind of mind swap going on here and I want to get behind it. But my whole point is that there's so many exciting things to learn about life, about history, about cultures, about art, about uh, um, technology. I mean, man, there's a never ending source of, of value to dive into in this world. And I can't see how you could be bored. How do you have time to watch Netflix series and play video games? Like, I don't get it. I don't have that time. Facts. So funny thing is, man, like this is, you know, but this is probably like an off camera talk, but it's real quick. I have a homie. His name is uh, Edsi, E-D-S-I. And he is Afghan, right? And he, he is an Afghan culture nerd, right? Knows everything top to bottom. So if you want to save yourself reading and hear him, and also he's a, he, he's a, he's a super fan of you. He's, he's the guy that was playing your videos when I was like eight, 17, 18. So if man and he's at he's from the country right so he would man 
first of all, I would like fan out for a minute, like, holy shit, like my idol's in front of me. But then, man, give you the breakdown from top to bottom about the Taliban. So he's he's someone he, who I can shoot you an email to and he'll. Yeah, like, right. He, he'd love, man, he would because like that's his passion. He foams out the mouth talking about his country. Right. Like he's super passionate. Wow. about that. So yeah, so yeah, I'll definitely. So he's shoot. probably taught you some things that you know we don't learn about in the West. Yes, and the be- and the best thing is, bro, he's the guy that, in a way, he saw the light in me. And it's probably what it's not a point, but I'll say this, guys: if you have a friend that really okay, his word, he he wants the best for you. He saw me as a guy that was funny, outgoing, and he was like, "Bro, you should be a YouTuber." And I was like, "Nah, man, like I I don't have a." a camera, I have a laptop. It's just too much stuff. I have that stuff. I'll help you. I, I have a camera. I, I know how to edit. I was like, you know what? If you're going to do everything for me, I guess I can just show up. Right. So you see, he saw potential in me. Right. And he, and, and he really pushed me and look at me, like, look how far I've come all because a person believed in me. So man, if you guys got mm-hmm. friends out there that, that just believe in you and help you out, you gotta keep those motherfuckers around. So I'm going to end yeah. the podcast guys. I uh, appreciate you guys for coming through. Elliot, see off like a man out closing thoughts. And uh, I appreciate you guys for coming through. And hey, man, defund simping, y'all. Peace. No, no.